sunny Southern California, well, not Southern California, but as we finally get sun in California, we'll be adjusting our <laughs> software, our camera angles, our delivery system, so to speak, so that we could get to know each other better, because if you're making me read these, I figure the least I could do is be seen by you to make sure that I'm really reading these. <laughs> Because without you, this book, My Utmost for His Highest, I definitely would not finish because out of 30 years of reading it, I've always told everyone I know and anyone I know that if you read it daily and live it, <laughs> you'll walk away with God into heaven. The reason being is that it's pretty challenging. At least if you understand it. Where a lot of people don't always necessarily understand everything that's in a devotional. Because God likes to take what a person needs for the day and apply it to their life that day. So each time you read it, say next year or the next year, you might get something different out of it. Or if you happen to be watching this video or another video, you might get something different based upon how God wants to apply it to your life. That's why, as intimate and real as Jesus was with the Father, that's what God wants for you. He wants you to be intimate and real with His Son, but not only Him, but with Himself. So my utmost for His highest, don't slack off. Yeah. Whatever you shall ask in my name, that will I do. From John 14, 13. Am I fulfilling this ministry of the interior? There is no snare or any danger of infatuation or pride in intercession. It is a hidden ministry that brings forth fruit whereby the Father is glorified. Am I allowing my spiritual life to be filtered away or frittered away? Or am I bringing it all to one center, the atonement of my Lord? Is Jesus Christ more and more dominant in every interest in my life? If the one central point, the great exerting influence of my life is the atonement of the Lord, then every phase of my life will bear fruit for him. I must take time to realize what is the central point of power. Do I give one minute out of 60 to concentrate upon it? If you abide in me, continue to act and think and work from that center. You shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Am I abiding? Am I taking time to abide? What is the greatest factor of power in my life? Is it work? Is it service? Is it sacrifice for others? or trying to work for God. The thing that ought to exert the greatest power in my life is the atonement of the Lord. It is not the thing we spend the most time on that molds us most. The greatest, the greatest element is the thing that exerts the most power. We must determine to be limited and concentrate our affinities. Whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do. The disciple who abides in Jesus is the will of God. And his, and his apparently free choices are God's foreordained decrees. Mysterious? Logically contradictory and absurd? Yes, but a glorious truth to a saint. Confusing, isn't it? <laughs> Not really, I get it. I got it, I get it, I'm going to... So what do we say? Explain it, Michael. What did that mean? Well, atonement really means becoming one with God. It means that you and He are aware of each other. You know each other. He lives in you. You live in Him. If you want to put it in modern terms, He's possessed you and you possessed Him. In reality, you could sit back in the back seat of your mind and listen to what God says through your mouth. That's what I do. <laughs> you think half of what comes out of my mouth that's right is me? No. 
What comes, what's wrong that comes out of my mouth is me. What's right that comes out of my mouth is God. And I am totally amazed half the times that the things that I say that have any fruit or productivity really aren't the me that I know. But it's the God that lives in me that seems to be speaking through me that I'm just as dumbfounded and fascinated as maybe you are to hear anything wise come out of these lips. And that's what atonement means. It means that God is in you and he is working through you. And what Oswald wants you to recognize is you need to think of it that way. You need to think that you're you know, the current phase or popularity seems to be vampires and being all these dual personalities. You need to think of it this way. Instead of vampires, you need to be possessed with Jesus. To be obsessed in your mind that one minute out of 60, or one second out of every six seconds, or however you said it, one minute out of 60, you need to think, am I aware that Jesus is in me. Am I aware that I am in him? So when you go out and sin, did you know that you take Jesus with you? Hmm, that's an interesting concept. Do you know that God goes with you wherever you are? Those are thoughts that cause you to abide or to become one or atonement with him. It's the easiest way to think of it is just atonement at one minute. You become, I could say it in another way, but you know, you know, in Hebrew, but you become one with them. Even as the Father is the Son, and the Son is in the Father, and the Spirit is one, and the three are one, and the three become one, because all are equal, and all are just as much separate, and together they are one, and you can get into the mystery of the unity of the Godhead, and get on to the mystery of how it's written in Hebrew, from the Shema, and from everything else, but the reality is it just means that they're one, like you and me. We are in God. So, take the time, find out, and look in the mirror, just stare in there and go, Hey Jesus, you in there? How you doing? Fixing things? I would. Oh, wait a minute. I did. Oops. <laughs> I do. I don't know. He's a weirdo. But that's what it means. When you discover it's true, then you know what atonement is. It's my utmost for his highest.